If you are into sewing, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. There are not any difficulties to mount the fabric into the embroidery frame. However, we need to consider some peculiarities. As I have already mentioned, the more elastic the mesh or any fabric is, the more difficult it is to mount and to embroider on it. In this course, I will not demonstrate the work with super elastic fabric, as we need to have individual approach for a particular mesh and a particular garment. Thus, I will demonstrate the Dutch mesh mounting, which is not stretchable lengthwise, and is stretchable crosswise. I place the non-stretchable side of the mesh fabric along the frame parts with the stapled fabric strips and the mesh stretch will be achieved by enlarging the frame along the perpendicular bars. First of all, it is necessary to define the fabric size and to correctly set the working zone of the frame. Let's suppose that your piece is 60 centimeters long and 25 centimeters high. Your future embroidered piece can fit in this area. I set the working area of the embroidery frame with some extra allowance. I have got the approximate sizes of the working area with allowances. Length, 74 centimeters, and height, width, 30 centimeters. I measure and cut the mesh along the length, making it one to two centimeters shorter than the distance between the vertical bars. It is important to have a straight rectangle for the mounting. In order to cut the mesh precisely and for convenience, I fold it twice, pin it to one of the stapled fabric strips on the bar, and cut it without stretching guided by the second parallel bar. I unpin and unfold the mesh. The piece for my future embroidery is ready. The most important is not to have any distortions of the mesh fabric when mounting. I turn over the embroidery frame facing down and sew one edge of the mesh to the fabric strip along the bar. Running stitches about two centimeters long are made. There is a rule. The more elastic the fabric is, the smaller the stitches are, and the more precise mounting is. I make a knot at the end of the thread, and when finishing sewing at the end of the frame, I make several back stitches. In this case, I can pull out the thread to use it for the next fabric mounting. As I have already mentioned, I use a coarse shoe thread and a rather thick needle. 
It is desirable to keep the sewing seam straight for a neat fabric mounting. I turn the frame toward me, evenly spread the mesh fabric along the second bar, pin, and sew it without stretching. I turn the frame facing up and release the wing screws for easy movement of the horizontal bars. I move the horizontal bars in the middle in the direction the fabric stretches trying to keep the corners of the frame straight. I measured the distance between the bars, which I need for the necessary tension of the fabric. I determine the length to move the frame and tighten the lower screws. Then I move the frame at either side for the determined measurement and tighten the screws on the second horizontal bar, making sure that the corners are straight. I would like to point out once again that at the beginning I moved the bars in the middle to determine how much the frame should be moved apart for the necessary mesh stretch. If you start stretching the mesh fabric at the ends, you will not be able to determine the correct position of the frame for the mounting as the mesh is more stretchable at the edges than it is in the center. Here you can make a mistake. You will need to release the frame and repeat everything anew. Only after can you move the frame for the determined measurement from one side and tighten the screw. Now you need to move the frame for the same measurement in the other side and fix the position with the screw. The vertical bars in the working zone should be of the same length. Let's check. In the center of the mesh, 
I feel the good stretch like a drum. But the edges are still sagging. So our work is not completed yet. That's why I will stretch the edges of the mesh with the ribbon and fix them with pins. Thus, there will be stretch in the opposite direction and the mesh will be totally stretched. I demonstrate here how to mount the mesh fabric with ribbons. It is the same principle like in the horizontal sewing of the mesh. The less distance there is between the ribbons, the more precise the mesh mounting is. The more elastic the mesh is, the less distance there should be between the ribbons. To avoid the tearing of the mesh from stretching, I recommend piercing with long, sharp pins. The end of the ribbon is placed under the vertical bar and is fixed with the pin to the fabric strip on the horizontal bar of the frame. I toss the ribbon over the top of the vertical bar and without pulling the mesh, I fix the ribbon with the pin at the edge of the mesh near its vertical cut. I wrap the vertical bar with the ribbon from the top again. Get the ribbon to the edge of the mesh downward and only now I start pulling the ribbon in order to have the tension in the first fixation point with the ribbon and the pin. I hold the ribbon with a finger and pin it without pulling to the second point of the fixation. I continue step by step. The more often you pierce the mesh, i.e. the closer the pins are, the more accurate and uniform the mesh stretch is. Once again, I remind you, firstly you pin, then wrap the ribbon over the bar, and only after you pull and fix it with the next pin to the mesh fabric. Please pay attention that each successive pin is placed in 0.5 to 1 centimeter inward the mesh fabric compared to the position of the previous pin. This is the amount by which the mesh stretches. When the ribbon is tightened, the position of pins will be leveled and they will be approximately at the same distance from the edge of the mesh. If you run out of ribbon, you can add more with a pin. So, here is the final loop. The remaining ribbon is pinned to the fabric strip on the bar. When I complete the stretching on one vertical side, I turn over the frame and similarly stretch the mesh from the other side.
I would like to show you how you can place the ribbon on a large reel when you do not want to cut it. It is quite simple. You alternatively wrap the ribbon through the vertical bar, under the bar, or above it. The rest of the process is the same. Please note, the wider the ribbon is, the easier and faster the work will be. I reach the end and fix the ribbon. The mesh is mounted. Now you need to check the quality of the fabric mounting. The mesh should be ideally flat like a trampoline. You can throw a light object like a reel of thread and it will bounce. This mounting principle is suitable for any fabric. You can achieve even better stretching for organza and thicker fabrics. Bear in mind that it is easier to make tambour embroidery on a fabric which is maximally stretched. You need to be sensible with the elastic meshes though. We cannot stretch it to maximum as during embroidery it will stretch again and create some complications. Besides, we need to consider the way the ready garment with our embroidery will look on a client. Once again, I would like to point out that the effect of the trampoline is not achievable for the elastic mesh with our method of fabric mounting.